Who What Wear Ham. The Summer of Love concert series brings free live music to the onset band shell every Wednesday night during the summer, but they brought some much needed heat on a cold and snowy night in February with their annual Chili Contest fundraiser. Summer of Love is a weekly concert series that takes place uh, during the summer months every Wednesday from 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, the 2013 season begins on June 26th, ends on August 28th. This is our sixth summer running it as the Summer of Love concert series. So why are you here doing this contest today? Um, supporting the arts, live music. There's not a whole lot going on at Onset in the middle of February. And I thought, you know what? A little friendly competition might be cool, get people out of the house, you know, they might have the winter blahs, and I figured this is a way to actually spice things up. A lot of local businesses kick in money, um, and then of course weekly at the shows we seek donations, and we also sell 50-50 raffle tickets. Um, this year I was lucky enough to get a grant from the Mass Cultural Council through the Wareham Cultural Council for $1,000. because we love Onset. We live here and we love it. All the bands that come to perform at the Summer of Love concert series, they all get paid. They're the only people that get paid. Um, all the band members get paid 100 bucks a piece. Um, this summer it's going to cost me about $10,000. I've got about 10 weeks of music, or exactly 10 weeks of music, and uh, you know, we got to pay sound men sometimes, we have to pay the bands. I do get grant money from the town for my advertising dollars, like posters and banners and that kind of thing. Um, but every, everything else pretty much goes to the bands that come to play. I made this firehouse chili. It's my third year since it started. And um, I was with Jamie Wirtan from the beginning. And um, we've been in second place two years in a row. And uh, me and my daughters are here Trying to win the first trying place. Get, get up there, yeah. Yeah, and our chili is great. Everybody seems to like it. And um, we're ready to roll. I mean, it's ready good stuff. Get. Proportions are secret yeah. and, cha and changeable daily, but um, developed over a period of years. So has it been in the family, kind of, or you just kind of made no, it up yourself? Uh, just whatever I had. In the, just in throw the, everything in there and go. That, that's more or less it. <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun to do. And I love my chili. Have you done this before, or is this no, first time? First time. Yeah. First time. All right. And um, how did you develop your recipe? I just I, I kind of like extrapolated from a lot of other wonderful people and wonderful chilies. You just kind of put this and exactly. this together. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, 26 years ago in a stormy town in Bristol, Rhode Island. Just gonna winged it up and yes. put something together. Some cohog and tuna chili. I've had the recipe for about 19 years. Actually, I got it from my wife and I've kind of perfected it along the way. And we're happy to be here and just, you know, be a family thing. It's, it's a good family oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, definitely. And that's it, you know? Me and my daughter's gonna have a good time together. <laughs> And his son's a vegetarian, they were coming to visit, so we said, well, you know, we're always looking for dishes, so this was perfect, and Guilty we fell in love with it. <laughs> you know, it takes, like, so much preparation, but yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, cutting up all the vegetables, but it's how, great. How long did it take you to do this batch up? It took me probably an hour over the weekend, and then I just left them in the fridge chopped up, and it took me, like, another, like, hour to work on it on Friday night. Wow. So a couple hours, yeah. you know. Slow cooker. This is the okay. first year here. Okay. Uh, but local area and say for WMBY in Martha's Vineyard, my buddy Bobby's been there for over 20 years. We just took third place in amateur this year in Martha's Vineyard with 2,000 people, so he makes a good chili. Meet a lot of nice people. How many of these do you do, say, in a year? Um, four? Oh, at least four. Four, 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 four. four or five. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very expensive hobby.
Okay, well, uh, we're back with Tyra and Dave. Um, well, we've, we've heard about how you got here. We've seen your food, and it's great. Um, nightlife, it's something that's been sorely lacking in the area. What are you guys doing to try to bring it back to uh, life around here? We are, we're mixing it up a little bit. Every, every night we try to have something going on. Um, we just started karaoke on Tuesdays. Um, that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's always interesting, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday nights we do acoustics. Um, we take a lot of our local bands that we have um, who have supported us through since the beginning. We've had right. Sound Tower, which is a Wayham local favorite, Shattered, Chain Drive. Um, we just recently had Cat Jones' band, The Heartbreakers, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, she's, to, she's, they're pretty good, aren't they? They yeah. are unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I know, um, I, I know Sound Tower draws a crowd every time I play. Yes. Yes. So all the bands do. The they, bands. they really do, and they they really take care of us. Um, you know, it's a, it's a win-win situation because they want to come and they want to pay to a packed place and, you know, everybody wins. Um, and they've been very supportive. We try to get as much local entertainment and support the local um, as much as we can. Most, most everybody is from around here, or we have, you know, some of the Kate fans, too. Yeah. We yeah. try, you know, we're always willing to try somebody out, see how it works, and, you know, some work out, some don't. Um, sometimes it's tough. You gotta, you have to listen to the people and see what the people want. You know, you're not going to please everybody, because that can never happen. <laughs> um, so we stick to Fridays and Saturdays. We do live bands. Um, we try to do a nice rotation, you know, a nice rotation through. We always try to mix it up. So you got uh, Wednesdays and acoustics? Yes. And Thursdays is karaoke. Tuesdays is karaoke. Oh, Tuesdays is karaoke. Yeah, Thursdays we're kind of playing around with right now. We're not really sure what we want to do. Get the NFL package in. Uh, we can, yes. Yeah. Well, I was going to say because Thursday night's football, yeah. football, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. football is always on. You got yeah. to have the football. Got football, absolutely. Um, and then Friday and Saturday for the bands. Um, and you have a different band each night, so it's a different band from Friday to Saturday. Yes. You don't have, you don't have yes. like a weekend of somebody. No, yeah. That's that always different. something different, though. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, and how do you find, I mean, you said local bands, but how do you find them? Are they approaching you? Are you? A lot of them is, um, I deal with them in the past when I had worked here previously, but a lot of, um, between Facebook and emails, um, recommendations, they'll come in and drop off a card or a demo. Um, there's, a, there's an overpour sometimes, and it's kind of tough to kind of shift through them. And I always ask different people, because unfortunately it's hard for me to go out and see a band. Right. So I'll send one of my, my regulars out and say, hey, go check out this band somewhere, and tell me what you think. And they'll come back and say yay or nay, and we'll take it from there. Yeah. I, I mean, I can remember years ago when I was probably about your age, um, working at a place that I, I was their scout. And, and yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun, and sometimes when the band was playing at my uh, club, I'd sit there and scratch my head, but I really see these guys before because yeah. sometimes what you heard wasn't what you remembered. In, uh, exactly. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I, so I know it's I know it's fun. It's a lot of work, but I know it can be fun. And, and uh, how's it been? I mean, it's a, a, you have the crowds to support having bands here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And it's just we just like I said, we have such a great support staff um, from our regulars that just have really been there for us, you know, through the good and through the bad, and yeah. you know, it's been great. But it, it probably helps that you guys are local, you are a local firefighter, and, and you've been here for as long as you have. Um, which I have to think it might have actually been one of the problems with the predecessors is they were from around here. I mean, they had vacationed here and fell in love with the place and wanted to do something, but ultimately there's no connection. It's so tough. You, so have you guys to do your have the connection, and, and that, that's got to help you, yeah. you know, for sure. Now, but you don't own the building, right? You're no. proprietors of the establishment. Exactly. Which is probably a bit of a relief, too, because that's a whole other <laughs> set of headaches. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, over the years, there's been some talk about doing something with the upstairs. Um, you know, if that's ever gonna, if you heard anything? I haven't really. Um, you know, there's always talk about everything. You never yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, this is what I can handle right now. I'm happy with this level um, and building it to where it can be bigger and better. Um, so I think we'll just we'll start small. <laughs> Well, everybody's going to start someplace, right? Yes, exactly. That's terrific. Well, listen, guys, I really want to thank you for taking the time to uh, do this and um, look forward to uh, 
you know, coming in and uh, having some fun on a Friday or Saturday night. Thank you for coming down and, hey. and taking the time with us. We appreciate it's, it. It's been my pleasure because, uh, you know, I think it's important to get the word out for the local businesses. Thank so again, you. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Our fourth annual auction and entertainment event is coming up on May 18th from 2 p.m. to 12 a.m. at the Bay Point Club Pavilion. For more information about the event, here's Sally Morrison. Hi, I'm Sally Morrison, member of WCTV, and I am here at the Pavilion at the Bay Point Club in Onset. The Bay Point Club is the host of this year's WCTV Live Auction and Entertainment Take four. This year's nonprofits joining us in partnership are the Wareham Hurricane Sandy Coalition and the Christopher Donovan School. Hello, my name's Helen Bradbury. I'm from the Christopher Donovan Day School at Four Recovery Road here in Wareham, right across from Wareham Crossing. We provide an alternative learning environment for students that are unable to attend a public school or even that of a collaborative type setting. Our students have um, intense needs and your funds will help us purchase assistive technology that will allow them to maximize their independence and fulfill community living skills. Hi, I'm Claire Smith. I'm from the Wareham Hurricane Sandy Coalition. Uh, which is a group of Wayham residents that banded together after Hurricane Sandy did its devastating work down in New York and New Jersey. As a community, we've adopted the neighborhood of Oakwood Heights, and we're there to lend our support and give whatever help we can give to get them back on their feet and back in their homes. Uh, it, during the holiday season, we sent down a trailer load of needed supplies. Um, we've been collecting gift cards and money so that they can rebuild and get back into their homes and get their lives back together. We have decided that we will continue our efforts and support them for the long haul until however long it takes that everybody is back home and safe and sound. For this year's Take Four Entertainment, we have Scott Record returning for his fourth gig as MC. In addition to Scott, we have a large variety of musicians, singers, and dancers who provide entertainment throughout the 10-hour event. On May 18th, the Bay Point Club is also hosting the Scotty Montero Jr. Foundation's annual golf tournament at the Bay Point Clubhouse. So come support three local nonprofits at the Bay Point Club. For more information about the auction and the items that will be up for bid and the entertainment schedule, go to wareham.tv.org. And join us on May 18th from 2 to midnight, either live at the Bay Point Club Pavilion or on your local cable access channel or streaming at wareham.tv.org and bid, bid, bid for these very worthy local nonprofits. I'm Tyler Ferdinand. I played point guard and shooting guard for the Wareham Vikings, and I am a senior in high school. But the big story was 
you inserted Tyler Ferdinand into the game, uh, into the first half. Tyler takes his first shot, it's a three-pointer, bang, it's in. Coach Spider most influenced me. He always tell, told me that I could shoot, keep shooting the ball, you know, play my game, I'll get my chance to play, and, and sure enough, I got my chance to play midway towards the season. He uh, has a nickname, the microwave, by uh, the oh. players on the team because he heats, oh, up, cool, he huh? heats up fast. Wow, so, uh, wow. that's uh, a great name. And uh, he's been, when I've asked him to come in, he's contributed, and whether it's on defense or shooting that three-pointer, and that's what, he, that's what he's in there for. So. Uh, I like to shoot the three a lot. You know, I was very good at it. That's why I got my nickname, the microwave, because I could always hit the long ball. So the person that influenced me the most was definitely Darian. Uh, we had a very good friendship, you know, we used to joke around, like, I told him he couldn't shoot, he told me I couldn't shoot, but uh, when it came down to it, important parts of the game, he pulled me aside and told me that I could shoot, don't be afraid to shoot the ball, I'm a shooter, so definitely have to be down. Uh, well, next year I plan on doing a prep year, playing basketball and baseball, and then after that I'm going to go to a four-year college and pursue either basketball or baseball. You know, take me as far as I can go, you know. Playing professional basketball is very hard, but as far as it, I can go, then I'm going to try to be a coach. Yeah, I've been thinking about coaching since I was in second and third grade, so I wanted to do was coach or play. I hung out with Darian after the game, you know, we were like, the next day it kind of hit us that, you know, the season was over, and you know, I think we, we were happy with what we did, you know, we did make it to UMass Boston, but I think we were Everybody is a little disappointed that we didn't get past it and go to the Garden. And um, overall, um, how do you think your season was? Uh, I think it was very well. I mean, we played five games without one of our center, and then we won all five, and then we went to the tournament without him too, and we proved to everybody that we could win without him. So, you know, I think we had a very good season. You know, win 22 straight games, that's a big accomplishment. Dorothy Cox Chocolates has been a family-owned and operated business since it was founded in 1928. The company recently opened a factory right here in Wareham to meet the high demand for their assorted treats. We went to their site to get an inside look at their brand new production facility. So are you going to be producing, uh, doing everything here? Uh, all our chocolates are going to be produced here in Wareham, yep. Wow, and what inspired that move here? Um, for a larger facility, um, we, uh, we getting requests from bigger customers and we needed more space and more capacity. So You're doing we, too well. I don't know about <laughs> that, but we're, you know, we're, we're holding our own. Great. So it's almost Easter, which obviously is a really busy time for you guys. Being e East, is, East is very busy for us. It's our second biggest holiday. Christmas is first, Easter is second, Valentine's is third. Wow, Easter trumps Valentine's, huh? Yes, wow. So what are we making today? Today we're going to fill some chocolate Easter rabbits and um, show you how we do that and how we do some lollipops. Mm. The chocolate comes, we, we use three suppliers because okay. um, we don't make chocolate itself. Okay. We, um, we buy the 10 pound bars and we melt them down and work with them. Um, there's only uh, seven chocolate companies in the U.S. that actually take the beans and process it into chocolate. Wow. And then they sell it to a number of people like myself and we work it into finished products. Oh, wow. So you do all the fun stuff. Yeah, we do. We, we, we get creative and turn it into finished items and get to deal with the customer that makes them happy. And we use about 200,000 pounds a year. What? Between milk, dark, and white chocolate. Oh my goodness. And a little bit of sugar free. So when you're producing something like the chocolate rabbits you're making right now, how many of those would you typically do in a day? In a day? Um, we average about 2,000 pounds a day when we're in full production of rabbits. And then once they're finished, where do you sell them? We sell them at a, a retail store, 63 Alden Road in Fairhaven. We haven't opened the store yet in Wayham. We're just still working on that. After we get the factory up and running, then we'll work on seeing where we can locate here in Wayham or in the area. So we have that to look forward to. Then. Absolutely. Um, we've had people in our kitchen here to, to learn how to make a particular item. I've been always open to that. I've gone to other people's places to learn how to make a particular item. If they, they do special, and oh. um, they've always been open to you know, that. So, you know, it's, it's all about giving that.
so it's, it's worked for us. Wow, that's really great. So See, where my grandfather's generation wouldn't have done that. And I'm not knocking that. Um, it's just I've learned so much by being open with people that it's, it's, better that I've, it's made our business a little bit better. Yeah. And you're not nervous about losing your market or anything like that? Um, no, no. Um, like I said, for the most part, people like to buy candy. And there's plenty of people that like candy. So oh, yeah. um, we've never been afraid to lose. No, because... No, it's, it's worked. I've never been too worried about that. <laughs> Seems like there's not much you guys haven't done. No, we've we've made taffy. We've yeah, we've made a hive candy. So you're there hasn't been many kinds of candy that we haven't tried to make. <laughs> that must be a fun part, though. It is. It's it, it's um it's fun and exciting because you get to get up in the morning and try something new if you wish. You know, that's one of the fun parts of working for yourself too. Yeah. Could be a downfall too. <laughs> Hasn't yet though. We're an 84 year old company and we've been known in the area. I just didn't know how much we were known in Wayham until we got down here. You know, seriously, we started, you know, and, and people started talking about, you know, oh, can we buy our candy? And people, you know, heard that we've come here. They come, they come knocking on the door, see if they can buy something. It's, it's made me feel good. And that's why we've looked at, you know, possibly opening the store. So we're working towards that. All right, so this lovely 35 pounds of Easter deliciousness will be available for sale at your Fairhaven store? Yes, it will be. Great. The Fairhaven store is at 63 Alden Road in Fairhaven across from uh, Wendy's. Great. Well, hey, thank you so much for letting us inside and taking a peek back here. I'm Caitlin Flaherty and I'm here with the Wareham Courier and I'm interviewing Megan Singleton, who's the chair of the Board of Library Trustees. And we're at the um, Free Library Mini Golf. Event. Yep, the Four for the Friends. It's our third annual event. The sponsors, um, our corporate sponsor is 80 Make Peace. Our full whole sponsors are Stony Batter Band, Wareham Week, Wareham Gateman. The Library Foundation, Wareham Pediatrics, Lindsay's Restaurant, Reedy Cannon and McNally LLP, and the 99 Restaurant. The Green or Tea sponsors are the Gateway Tavern, Smith Cesspool Service, Madigan Tax Service, Kaleidoscope, Barrett Heating and Appliance, Shirt Shack, Sullivan Wine and Spirits, Best Friends Preschool, Coastal Orthodontics, Cool Cone, The Narrows Crossing, and Bayside Agriculture. And we do have one skill sponsor, which is the Little Harbor Country Club. We set up an 18-hole mini golf course inside the library through all the books and stacks of the library. Each hole is sponsored by either one or two businesses. They decorate it as they please. They put their menus, coupons. They put anything that has to do with your business. And it's a lot of fun. They build their own obstacles. And they really get, they've really gotten into it this year. This event is really important because it helps supplement the book budget for the library. The town only is available to give us around half of our book budget money. So the friends have to make up for it for the town so we can keep our certification. So this is a huge money maker for us. Last year we made over 7,000, but with the snow this year, we're hoping to bring in at least five. The snow hopefully won't scare everybody away. They continuously buy books for every department, so we don't purchase them. Denise makes the decision on what department needs what and she goes from there but there's a certain amount of money that needs to be bought to keep up for our certification. It's a lot of fun. Um, everybody should come out and at least try it once. Um, you'll have a blast. There's raffles which we have a lot of great raffles this year and I'm sure every year we'll have better ones. We got an American Girl doll this year which has been a humongous hit with the girls. Six Flags donated tickets. Um, I'm trying to think. The New England Patriots had a signed photo of, I can't remember who it was, but they were really good. Um, Reedy, Cannon, and McNally, they had a great raffle also with um, hats and blankets. We have probably over 30 raffles this year, so it's great. 
I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do here in the children's room. We have lots of toys and puzzles and games for the kids. We have thousands of children's books and whatever we don't have we can get for you from another library. If your child is five years or older, he or she is eligible for a free library card. And if your child is younger, we give the parent a free library card and you may borrow the books. We have books, DVDs, videos, puzzles, magazines, puppets, lots of things you can borrow. And we also do story times for children. We have three different groups. We have a toddler group for babies 18 months to three years old. We have a three-year-old group. And we also have a pre-kindergarten group for children ages four to five. In all of the groups, we do stories and crafts. And as part of our story time, we use musical instruments. And we do rhythm games, we do rhyming. We use puppets in our story time. We do action rhymes. We teach the kids lots of songs. And even sometimes we might use our parachute and play games with that. So it's lots of fun. Please come down and visit us at the library. This February vacation, we're doing our normal story times. Plus, we're doing a special snowman story walk, snowman at night and we're actually having Frosty the Snowman here to visit us, and we're going to end up in front of the fireplace with hot chocolate and cookies. So please come down and join us this school vacation week. Thank you. Despite the snowstorm, the Whit Humphrey Library raised enough money to continue purchasing books and materials for the year. Be sure to check them out and support your local libraries at wherehamfreelibrary.org. Stay tuned to WCTV for live gavel to gavel coverage of Wareham's Springtown Meeting starting April 22nd at 7 p.m. For Who What Wareham, I'm Warren Randolph.